This is Restoration Bible Church and Ministries. We are a people of excellence living purposefully. As you listen to God's servant, Reverend Dr. Tunde Balanta, we trust that God's word will work wonders in your life. Jesus, our mercy sit. Can we say that together? Say it one more time. All right, let me say it for myself. Jesus, my mercy seat. Second Corinthians chapter 1, verse 3, Micah 7, 18. Second Corinthians 1, 13 says, Blessed be God, even the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of mercies. Hallelujah. The message translation says, Mercy is your specialty. Hallelujah. Mercy is your specialty. Micah 7 18. Who is like who is a God like unto thee that pardoneth iniquity and passed by the transgression of the remnant of his heritage? He retaineth not his anger forever. Because he delighted in mercy. Somebody says, God delighted in mercy. God is the father of mercies. He delights in mercy because it is the expression of his nature. Someone say with me, God is the father of mercies. He delights in mercy. Because it is the expression of his nature. You know, when something is the expression of your nature, you just do it without thinking. You don't have to teach a fish to swim, it gets into the water, it's in his element. Hallelujah. He delighted in mercy, he enjoys mercy. What a father we have. If you look at our world today with all the challenges that we're going through in the land all over the world today, you start wondering, where is this mercy of God? But God delights in mercy. Second Chronicles 16, 9 says, The eyes of the Lord, they are running to and fro throughout the whole earth to show himself strong in the behalf of those whose hearts are upright towards him. Hallelujah. He just loves to do good. He sends rain on the just and on the unjust. I was looking at Psalm 136, and you know, everything about him has to do with mercy. He made the great lights for his mercy and it forever. He made um, the, the moon, his mercy and it forever. He makes the heavens, his mercy and it forever. He brought us out of uh, the land of Egypt. His mercy endureth forever. It seems like everything he does, he does for mercy. How would you like to have a father that every time he breathes, he's thinking of good things concerning you? How many of you have a father? How many of you know you have a father like that this morning? Every time, yeah, the enemy may be telling you, but why are you going through what you are going through? Listen to me. When God is thinking about you today, the thoughts he said I have towards you, Jeremiah 29, 11, they are thoughts of peace and not for, of evil to give you a future and an expected end. I don't know where you've been. I don't know what you are going through. I don't know if life is throwing you sour lemons, but I'm here to tell you this morning, child of God, he that is your father is the father of mercies. He's thinking about good things for you. He's thinking about how your tomorrow will be better than your today and your yesterday. I'm talking about the father of mercy. I don't know who I came to talk to this morning, but your father is the father of mercy. He's bigger than that challenge. He's bigger than that thing threatening you right now. God is. God wants you blessed more than you want to be blessed. God wants you healed more than you want to be healed. God has gone to the extra mile to die a death in your behalf. He is the father of mercy. If you believe he is your father of mercy, can you give him a wave offering this morning and say, I declare he is my father of mercy. I'm happy this morning 
saying that I'm serving a God that in the midst of pain, in the midst of shame, he's saying I want to do good concerning my child. His eyes are running to and fro. He's thinking about me. He's thinking about you. Even if you have gone through a bad patch in your life, I want to declare to you, if you are to meet God now, this moment, and you are to say to him, Father, this has happened to me, and that has happened to me, and the other one has happened to me, he will say, my thought towards you is a thought of mercy. Oh, I lost somebody. I lost a job. I lost this. I lost that. He said, my thoughts towards you are still thoughts of mercy. This happened in this area, and that happened in that area. God is still saying, my thought towards you are thoughts of mercy. Somebody disappointed me. I lost a job. God is still saying concerning you, my thought towards you are thoughts of mercy. You know something else? He's not only thinking, he is doing how God anointed Jesus Christ of Nazareth with the Holy Ghost and with power who went about doing good and healing all that were oppressed of the devil. I declare with my mouth today that my God is the Father of mercy. Oh, can you say Daddy is the Father of mercy? Say it one more time. My Daddy is the Father of mercy. Let's sit down for a bit. Somebody says, Pastor, I've gone through hell and high water. That's why you should be in church and hear what I'm saying to you. Go and read about all the people in the Bible that did great things. They also had great challenges. We could well said, great faith come out of great battles. You know, mercy will not let God rest. As a man thinketh in his heart, if you think God now the cause your problem, he no go fit help you. If it, if it, a child in a class believes that the teacher hates him, that child will keep failing. Because yes, anytime the teacher comes, even the teacher not talk to her, say, you know some people. If you believe that somebody is against you, even when the person is looking straight, you say he's looking at me. <laughs> even if the person is not talking about you, if he's even talking, say, they must be talking about me because your mind is telling you that God is punishing you for something. God is trying to hold money down. Money is coming, oh. Say, so which is easier, to say your sins are forgiven or take up your bed? It is you that think a million naira is a big deal. It's you that think a hundred million is a big deal. It's you that think a billion is a big deal. The God that is borrowing everybody air to breathe. Poor must go to the bank of God and say, God, I need bread. Rich must go there. President must go there. Vice president must go there. Governor must go there. Anybody you can mention who is flesh and blood must... You know, that is the most expensive thing. If God should seize that thing for one second, you have to leave everything behind. And is your father this morning. I said, is your father this morning. I love the story of the prodigal son. My goodness. The story of the prodigal son. In Luke 15, that guy who messed up, Jesus was using that story to show us the father's heart. There are a few things there, and I need to move quickly. There are a few things in that story that will help us to understand the mercy of God. The boy had blown his inheritance. What the father struggled to gather this boy, you know, people that don't work for money, they don't know how to spend it. Don't be dashing children, everything. Let them work for some things. Hallelujah. Well, my father used to tell me that the way you are scratching my tire when you drive, tire is expensive. I said, what's wrong with this old man now? But nobody is telling me now. When drivers scratch tire, you think about the price of the tire. Anyway, this boy blew the whole money. Blue is inheritance. But you know what? Number one, the mercy of God convinced him to come back home. The Bible says God's mercy leads to repentance. Let me tell you something, child of God. The mercy of God is always there for you, no matter what you are going through in life. Hallelujah. Now, note this down that... Um, so many things here, but let's pick and choose. The mercy of God is a navigational aid for your destiny. When road collapse, you don't know what to do. 
the mercy of God. For example, that, that guy, he went back home because of what? He said, how many of my, that's in Luke 15, we will not read it, but you know the story. How many of my father's servants have enough to eat and I'm eating with pigs? I don't, I don't care how far you are fallen. The mercy of God can always return you back to the Father. Hmm. Number two, the mercy of God looked out for that boy every day. Mercy looks out for you every day. That means when you are in a bad situation, mercy is saying, what can I do to get this person on the right road? Hallelujah. Number three, he was still his son though he had been on the wrong road. Sometimes you say, Father, I think I've messed up. I think I've missed it. I think this business is not going the way I want it. He was on the wrong road, but he was still a child of God, he was still a child of the Father. Number four, mercy reached out to him before his full disclosure and confession. Mercy reached out to him. How many of you have made a mistake and you are planning how you will explain yourself. Anybody ever been there? Maybe you stole a, a meat from the pot. If the first one, nobody saw you. <laughs> See, they didn't catch me in the first one. Let me take the second one. And as you are taking the second one, mommy stood behind you. Then you start saying, um, um, you know, mommy, mm, you forgot to give me meat yesterday. It's yesterday's meat I'm eating today. <laughs> And before you could say that, your mommy says, take another extra one. Hallelujah. It wasn't that you did something wrong. Your mommy is just saying, oh boy, I know what you have done. You cannot hide from me. That doesn't mean it's justifying sin. Before the boy could tell the story, the father said, listen, just come. He hugged him. He said, oh, I missed you. I said, Pastor, are you saying we should go and be messing around? That's not what I'm saying. I'm just saying whatever condition you are in, the Father's heart is always towards you. Before you could disclose, some, even some of us say, hey, you took uh, five million, huh? two weeks, you have finished, uh, explain to me. Which, where did you drink? <laughs> you, the boy must give you detail of why he, he won't you ask him? So you, 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 then you will beat him. Call community to help you beat him. Come on, let's be honest. Even me, I would like to give me a few strokes. <laughs> like, you took five million, you blew it down. Now. But before the boy finished the story, the father said, just come. Just come. Mercy is more interested in relationship than in judgment. Put it down. See, that, that's not giving you liberty to go and mess around. But he's just saying, listen, he cannot deny himself. He said, when we are faithless, he remains faithful. Child of God, look at me. You may be at the bottom today, but mercy wants to lift you because Jesus is your mercy seat. Hallelujah to Jesus. Hallelujah to Jesus. Mercy treasures that relationship. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Mercy gives you the best when you are undeserving. He got the fatted calf, he got the best robe, he got a ring. Mercy celebrates relationship. I already mentioned that. No matter how much we fail. Then when the senior brother came, the guy started complaining that this stupid boy, why are you, why are you celebrating this rascal? Mercy is ready to be misunderstood and criticized in order to love you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You know, Jesus, they call him a friend of sinners. People abused him. They say he hung around with wrong people. When the senior brother came, he said, what is this bad boy doing here? He said, I will endure your misunderstanding because I want a relationship with this, my son. There was a time people were hungry. The Bible says Jesus had mercy and he fed the 4,000. Jesus is our mercy seat. He that did not spare his own son, but gave him up for us all, how shall he not with him freely give us how many things? All things. Note this down, that Jesus our mercy seat, through the blood of redemption 
has created our accounts with all the benefits of salvation. Say with me, Jesus, my mercy seat. I didn't hear you. Jesus, my mercy seat. Through the blood of redemption, has credited my account with all the benefits of salvation. Romans 3.25, the Amplified Classic, please. And Exodus 25.22. Romans 3.25, whom God put forward before the eyes of all as a mercy seat and propitiation by his blood, the cleansing and life-giving sacrifice of atonement and reconciliation to be received through faith. This was to show God's righteousness because of his divine forbearance. He has passed over and ignored former sins without punishment. You know, if you look at Exodus 25, 22, God said, I will commune with you from the mercy seat. You know, in the Old Testament, hallelujah, in the Holy of Holies, this is, this is another teaching on its own, but let's just take this part of it. In the Holy of Holies, there was just one piece of furniture there. There was an Ark of the Covenant and the cover of the Ark of the Covenant, which was called the Mercy Seat. Inside the Ark of the Covenant was the Ten Commandments, which it could not keep. Inside the Ark of the Covenant was Aaron's rod that budded. When they were arguing who God anoints, who God no anoints, they said, go on, all of you go and bring your, this thing. It was only Aaron's own that budded. Inside that same Ark of the Covenant, there was manna. God, they were doing protest against God. And God said, I give you manna. So it represented their rebellion and their failure. But that cover of the mercy seat had um, the carving of two cherubims, angels there. And on that cover, the high priest will bring blood once a year. And once that is done and the presence of God comes there, people started rejoicing. Because every time God has shown them mercy, you see, every time, once the high priest did that, everything went well. No enemy could defeat them. Their crop must prosper. No evil can touch them. Because the blood, somebody has substituted them, the blood of that animal for a whole nation. Now the Bible says to us, all the promises of God, they are what? They are yea and amen in Christ. Can I say that again? Because sometimes we need to let it get here. Two animals, one was going to go, the scapegoat was going to be sent into the bush, but this other one, they put the blood on that mercy seat. He said, I will meet you at the mercy seat. You see, God himself is view you constantly through the blood of his son, which means I want to relate to you in mercy. God will help us. He said, it's at the mercy seat I will talk with you, not any other place. I know you have not done good. I know you broke the law. I know you rebelled. I know you murmured. But my mercy will prevail over judgment. I want to help you. I want to bless you. He said, your sins and your iniquity, I will not remember because I want to bless you. It's not because God has a bad memory. It's because he chose to forget. And I want to say to you, if the blood of one animal, one animal on the mercy seat can make sure that they are protected, they are blessed in the city, they are blessed in the field, a thousand will fall by their side, ten thousand on their right hand, it will not touch them, favor followed them, no enemy could destroy them, no witch could destroy them. If the blood of one animal could do that, how much more of the blood of the Son of God, God himself, Jesus is my mercy seat. And I celebrate the goodness of Jesus this morning. I want to testify in the house of God that the blood of Jesus is enough for me. It has cleansed me. It has forgiven given me. It has healed me. It has blessed me going out. It has blessed me coming in. I want to declare today that if God has nothing against me, no man can cut me down. The applause will not work against me. It will not work against my family. The blood of Jesus was enough for the whole world. The blood of Jesus is enough for your family. A lamb was enough for a house. I want to declare to a child of God today, they will surely gather not by me, but whoever gathers against you, they will fall down for your sake 
because there's blood in heaven. There's blood calling my name in heaven. There's blood saying untouchable. There's blood saying irreprovable. I want to declare to you today, we are going higher. I said we are going higher. I said I am going higher. I said you are going higher. There's blood on the mercy seat and that blood is calling your name for eternity. This season in this land will pass over. It will pass over you. The evil will pass over you. But the blood on the mercy seat will never dry. It will never dry. It, oh, God give us revelation. Somebody help me shout a better hallelujah. <laughs> Sit down for a bit. Do you know after the high priest once a year applied that blood, the people rejoiced because the new answer has come. Which brings me to another thought quickly. Many of us agree that Jesus Christ entered once and for all. When the devil says, this is your family history, this one is not working, that one will not work, you failed before, you say, tell the devil, once upon a time, blood was accepted on the mercy seat for me. And you were eternally defeated. Other people may fail, but I am not failing. You may kill others, but you will not kill me because there's blood on the mercy seat for me. Jesus, the Bible says in Romans 3.25, is our mercy seat. Now, how do you tap into that mercy? Because when, when, when Israel knew that the blood on that mercy seat had been accepted, there was celebration. Do you know your own celebration should have been celebrating every day? Because thousands of years ago, Jesus put his blood and it's still fresh. When the Supreme Court discharges and acquits you, what is the customary court going to do to you, Barrister Ogo? What can the customary court do? He has no, it no longer exists. Everything they are saying is happening no longer what? Exists. Because we have the judgment of the universal court of heaven where you are concerned. Saying God has put blood down on your head. But the highest sacrifice on the highest altar by the highest being with the highest name has been made for you. You will not pay with your life what Jesus Christ has paid for with his blood. It's been working for us. It's going to continue to work for us. If you want to cut us short, your plane cannot get to heaven. It cannot even get to the moon. Even if you get there, you cannot get to heaven where God is. That's where blood is calling our name in restoration. And I say it is well with us in the name of Jesus. Is there a believer in the house of God? Glory to God. Fill up your basket of praise for the mercy of God. Fill up your basket of praise. Psalm 135, 5 and 6. But I have trusted, Psalm 135, 5 and 6. But I have trusted in thy mercy. My heart shall rejoice in thy salvation. I will sing unto the Lord because he has dealt bountifully with me. If you read this psalm from the beginning, there were challenges. But he said, I have trusted in your mercy and then I will rejoice. If you read from verse 1, you see that it was not a smooth ride. But he made up his mind that he had trusted in God's mercy. So he was going to rejoice. Dr. Lydia Yeomans has a story in her book, Healing from Heaven, of a missionary who contracted smallpox when there was no cure for it in China. She was quarantined for some time. They quarantined her, and they expected her to die. But as she began to seek the Lord, the Lord showed her in a vision two baskets. One basket contained the test and trial and the smallpox, and it was full. But the basket of praise was half, half full. And God told her that if you will praise me and the basket of praise will get full, that smallpox will disappear. You need to fill up your basket of praise. Every time the Passover was, I mean, the, the atonement was done in the Old Testament and the presence of God came, they knew the blood was accepted for them. They rejoiced. They rejoiced. 
That woman had smallpox, no cure at that time. And when she began to praise God, people say, ah, maybe it's, you know, when you are very sick, sometimes you're, you go to some kind of delirium. She was, ah, keep quiet. He said, do you want to join me in the praise? This is where the rubber meets the road now. How many of you agree that blood has been placed on the altar of heaven for you? Your account has been credited with everything. If that is really true, then you need to fill up your basket of praise. On one side is the problem. On one side is the need. On one side is the frustration. On one side is the heaviness of heart. On one side is the challenge you are facing. But listen, if you will not give him praise for what he has already done, it cannot manifest. Praise, worshiping God and giving him thanks is what draws that thing from heaven. You draw it like rain to come. The Bible says, with joy, Isaiah 12, 3, you will draw water out of the well of salvation. Paul and, uh, and, 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 and Silas began to praise God. And, and there was an earthquake in that prison. Hallelujah to Jesus. I know the challenge is on one side. But what happened to your praise? What happened to the lifting up of hands? What happened? If we really know that Jesus did it, if we really know that he has paid a price on our head, then we need to be able to say, God, I am thanking you irrespective of what I'm seeing. Can I get an amen somewhere? I'm thanking you irrespective of the limitation I'm facing right now. I'm giving you praise over and above my pocket. I'm giving you praise over and above. Listen, God is not your age mate. He's not the age mate of the devil. When he said he has done something, please have enough respect for him. Because God, he said, my ways are your, not your ways as the heavens are far from the earth. He said, so great is his mercy towards you. There's not, listen, we have entered a season of acceleration in this place. Some of you, you'll be so accelerated, you will not believe you, you will land yourself. But it's not going to happen if you withhold praise. Praise is his food. Worship is his food. That's the way you are saying, Daddy, you are bigger than this situation. Daddy, you are higher than this situation. There's blood in heaven in my name. No weapon formed against me shall prosper. I can only rise higher. I cannot go back. I don't know who I came to talk to this morning. Is there somebody in the house who can lift their hands today? I say, Lord, I give you praise over and above my situation. I'm going to obey the Lord. I'm going to obey the Lord. I'm going to obey the Lord. Quickly. I open this altar up right now. God, I'm in trouble. I'm in crisis. Please honor God and stand wherever you are. Stand. Everyone stand. I'm in trouble. I'm in crisis. But I want to praise God anyhow. You have one minute to get down here. Space yourself as much as possible. One minute to get down here. Just lift your hand. I'm not praying for you. You are praising him. Say, God, this is the problem on this side, but I'm giving you praise. You are bigger. Space yourself out. Just lift your hand. Take a minute and say, Lord, I thank you. I give you praise. I give you praise over and above this situation. I'm coming out of it. The altar is full. Just remain where you are. I give one minute. Just lift that hand and praise him. Mention the problem on one side and let your praise basket be filled this morning. I give you praise, you are bigger than this situation. I give you praise, you are bigger than my frustration. I give you praise, you are bigger than my affliction. I give you praise, you are bigger than what I'm going through. I give you praise, you are turning it around for my glory. Let him hear your praise this morning. Let him hear your praise this morning. Oh, Mary, ba 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 ba. Satali, ba 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 ba. Now I'm going to pray for you. Keep those hands up. Keep those hands up. Father, in the name of Jesus. Father, in the name of Jesus. We lift up our basket of praise over the condition in our lives, over the challenges we are facing, over the tests and trials, and we call you blessed in the name of Jesus. Father, I praise you. I praise you over my challenge. I praise you over this situation. I praise you over everything here. I give you glory and I give you worship. I worship you. Receive my praise in the name of Jesus. Anybody can, can shout when the wall is down. It's only people of faith that can shout when the wall is up. I want you to give Jesus seven hallelujah shouts. And as you do, 
See the wall of Jericho coming down. Look at that thing you lifted coming down. Let's go. Hallelujah. 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 Thank you for listening to today's message. We know you were blessed. You can reach us through the following platforms. Restoration Ministries International on Facebook and Instagram. RBCM Online on Twitter, YouTube and Mixella. Visit our website www.rbcmonline.org or Restoration Close, Romeo Extension, Kaduna, Nigeria. 